Hello, everyone, and welcome back to This Week in Guns, brought to you by Patriot Patch Company, VZ Grips, and Primary Arms. This show offers commentary on all of the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matthew LaRosier, and I'm here with my co-host, Sean Heron. How are you doing? I am here. I am not allowed to do banter. Yes, so we have gotten several uh, comments from you guys uh, about the banter that we engage in throughout the course of the show and, and that this displeases you. I don't know if it's a texture thing or, um, you know, for <laughs> it's probably what it's like mushrooms. The texture is yeah. weird. Yeah. It's a, it's a texture thing. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I too, uh, you know, when I tune into a talk show, the first thing I'm always thinking is shut up. Yeah. Sh- shut up. Yeah. I just want somebody to robotically regurgitate the news no opinions, no, uh, no nothing. Just read the headline, read <laughs> one paragraph from the beginning, one from the middle, and the summation, and yeah. then move on to the next story. Or even better, read the first and last word of each paragraph. That's let's do that. That seems much yep. more efficient. It's yep. That's all you need, really. Anyway, uh, show. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. We're going to be done with the show in like seven minutes. That's true. That's true. It's going to be awesome. And they're going to be like, fine. I'm finally done with listening to my stupid talk show that I do in my commute. Right. Or whatever it is that I do. free podcast. Yeah. How dare so them. Glad do, it's over. Yeah. How dare uh, them do a thing that I don't love. I don't like that. <laughs> no. Actually, it was just two people on his YouTube channel. I think uh, that's the first I've actually ever heard of anyone saying anything about it. So. Yeah. No, I mean, it's kind of I, I was just so it was one of those things where you know I, I you get tons of negative comments right and most of them are you know not helpful or constructive yeah yeah but sometimes it's so unhelpful and not constructive you just get mad right you know? it's like you tuned into a talk show you <laughs> it's YouTube people are weird man podcast people are dope YouTube people yeah. weird AF well, it is a like so. It, this is designed as a podcast, guys. You know, I do I do upload it to YouTube because some people consume podcasts on YouTube, myself yeah. included. I mean, and uh, it, it people are just so fascinating. Uh, Even, but yeah, podcast people. But the reason you listen to a podcast is, you know, you find a podcast with people that you can kind of like jive with. Yeah, relate right, to. That you feel like you're. What are you saying? I said relate to, yeah. Exactly, yeah, that you feel are relatable, that, you know, share your core values, that, you know, you may, you know, have some kind of romantic interest in. Yeah. And you, you're you in the car by yourself or whatever it is, or you're cleaning around the house or whatever, and you listen to it. Like, that's why, it, you, so guess what? Those people want banter. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. Well, and unfortunately, in trying to do no banter, we've done more banter than ever. Oh, were we actually trying? I. Well, no, not really. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, well, no, no, no. We can try now because we've got to go on to our first sponsor. Okay, boom. It is Primary Arms. They sponsor the show. They provide incentives. Incentives. <laughs> Primary Arms incentivize is us, and they are nice and good. Primary Arms sells primarily arms. Uh, they're available. The price is, is very reasonable. Yeah. You can see here the reasonable price is, is um, Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Six sixty nine ninety nine. What? Springfield XDM Alito SP nine millimeter five sixty nine ninety nine. You're saying those uh, prices FFL, so weird. I, I got confused for a minute. FFL is required. Yeah, I mean they're legal. They do legal. In fact, some of the prices are low enough to the point where you must add it to the cart in order to view the price. So we will demonstrate that immediately. That's my favorite way to cheat map. Yeah. Five twenty nine ninety nine. Jeez. Okay, that's a, U.S. Optics. That's a good deal. Uh, yeah, it's actually pretty good. Like, down from the, you know, down from seven hundred bucks. But yeah, no, I do. I hate map, but I understand why it's done. Oh yeah, totally. It's such a like little bastard way around it. I love it. Yeah. Also, you had a. <laughs> excuse me. I didn't a, advertise it. You had an IR flashlight in your cart. I did. Oh yeah, I did. Why did I have that? Oh. I think we were talking about that and you told me to buy it and I obviously didn't. I think, yeah, I've heard really good things about the vampire from surefire and they're expensive, but they're, they're, uh, 
They're cool. They're cool. Look how much that sticks off the front of that gun. Yeah, and that's not a small gun. No, that's a two two six. In fact, that's an oversized gun. Is that a two two six or nine? I, uh, a... I don't know. I can't tell. I don't know <laughs> Sig. Good. I the only Sig that I like very much is the P three sixty five and XL. The only one I like is the P two ten. Very. And I like their rifles. I just wish their rifles weren't pornographically overpriced. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you could probably even buy their rifles at Primary Arms. Yeah, you could. I Well, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You guys should go check it out. And if you do, if you buy an optic, uh, use promotion code Foxtrot Romeo November. Purchasing the optic will entitle you to one mount. These are the terms of the agreement. And if you wish for more specifics on the terms, you may visit frn.deals slash PA, like Pennsylvania. Do it. Do it. Do it. Well, that's enough banter for us. We're right, out. Immediately into the news. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, uh, people. Number one, Maryland Senate hearing on ghost gun ban has extended into the night with very intelligent um, legislature people saying the, the right things about the bill. They, they communicated what was needed to be heard by their constituents. Uh, the lawmakers, they heard hours of testimony for and against the legislation, including from Baltimore Brandon, uh, Mayor Brandon Scott, who recognized that his city dominates much of the conversation about gun violence. Direct quote from the Baltimore mayor. Firearms do not have, that do not have serial numbers and or registration have no place on our streets, and it should not be easier to purchase and build one of these ghost guns than it is for me to buy medicine at CVS. Holy moly. Right, next news story. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> How hard is it to buy medicine at his CVS? I mean, I've been to Baltimore and it's hard to do things generally. Okay. When uh, you have all of your income taxed away, it probably is very hard to purchase anything. I, they're probably talking about like pseudoephedrine and stuff like that. And as far as it is here in Colorado, the process is you go to the druggist and you be like, yes, one drug, please. And mm-hmm. they say, which drug, please? And I say, the strongest, most powerful drug, please. And they bring <laughs> it to the thing, and then I have to scan my driver's license, and then they make me sign a thing that I will not make extra super drug with <laughs> said drug. And then I pay please them, don't dilute this. and I walk away. And <laughs> it's it's very, that's pretty easy. Like, it must be more difficult there because making an 80% into a gun is not that well, and easy. Well, also, what medicine are you talking about, right? Sudafed. Like, you can go in and buy ibuprofen or whatever, you know, normal things that you need. Yeah, right? yeah. But you know that they don't want to say that. They just want to be like, oh, no, anything that I buy at CVS is way more difficult than making a ghost gun. You right. know they're talking about Sudafed where you have to give your ID, but... Right. Yeah. Well, so with, with you know, a let's like, say you buy an 80% gun, you have to submit all of your information to the computer internet, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or go to a store and buy it, which is the same thing as buying the thing at CVS. And then you have to... So I've never bought a Sudafed that required that I, you know, synthesize any compounds at home, right, before taking it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right? It's just weird, man. They just don't Although want... now I want that. Yeah. It's the same argument as it's... Uh, I want... Uh, what is it? Guns to have the same rights as, or the same restrictions as women. Cars yeah. Or, or women. Wait, what? I don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah. It shouldn't be easier to get a gun than an abortion. That, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Which is like, okay. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, I'm not pregnant. I know I look like it. Yeah. I'm, why are you talking to me about that? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> first of all, yeah. I don't have a uterus. Yeah, apparently it broke during yeah. the war. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, but yeah, this is just more of that that fear mongering. Look how easy this thing is. Except anyone who's actually done an eighty percent uh, or three D printed a gun, mm-hmm. there is no ease in this process. And, no. And, and okay, take out the actual manufacturing of the thing, which right. we've been able to do for hundreds of years. But that's beside the point. You know, like buying it is just as easy as buying Sudafed. Like right. same information provided, pal. And even if they buy it at a gun show, like who cares? Who cares? It's not illegal. Yeah. Liter- well, it also like, here's the thing. Where's the harm? 
Where's like, the harm in buying the gun? The yeah. harm is that the harm attaches somewhere else if the harm ever happens, which in the vast and sweeping majority of cases, it does not. No. Um, and, you know, harm happens with the prescription drugs quite, or, they, or you know, these over-the-counter drugs quite often. Mm -hmm. So it, it's an intense category error, and I, I really hate that type of logic, right? Because it's not. It, it's just bumper stickerisms, it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a very good way to put it. You just have a bunch of, like, sitcom writers sit in a room, and then... And you're like, eventually they'll come up with something good. Yeah. And then one of them goes, oh, man, it was really tough this morning when I wanted to make lean. And I they had, it kept asking me why I needed so much of the cough medicine. Yeah. It was really hard. <laughs> Hold on. Boys. Boys. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing, man. Easier to do gun than make lean. Okay, adjust it. Adjust the last part. It's like <laughs> we got it. Yeah, it's like Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld are sitting yeah. around writing the script for the anti-gun <laughs> movement. Yeah, yeah. Which so what's up but, with these ghost guns? Yeah, what's up with the ghost guns? Could you? <laughs> uh, and we should be doing the same thing in reverse, though, right? I mean, it. Not that it's logically sound or anything, but that it's just fair tactics at this point. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, it's it's a Maryland bill. They're trying to ban blah blah, blah everything. Require you know um, they want to require all gun all handguns to be registered. Of course, they're pushing for that, and it's uh, stupid. It of is. course, we've got our friends, um, you know, really uh, great great friends at Maryland Shall Issue that do incredibly good work are standing against the bill. So you know, best of luck to them, and you know, hopefully they can keep what little they have. <laughs> good in maryland yeah seriously yeah and if not hey flee to a freer state and keep it freer and even That's, more so at least you're not washington yeah yep you're not washington <laughs> which speaking up guys news item number two washington state democrats push ban on 51 specific firearms the legislation sb 5217 is sponsored by state senators patty kuderer democrat manka dinga democrat Marco Leos, Democrat, Joe Wynn, Democrat, Jamie Peterson, Democrat, Claire Wilson, Democrat, and others. <laughs> okay, next story. Thanks, Breitbart. Um, <laughs> this, this is just a list of names. Next article. <laughs> Thank you for the advertising revenue. <laughs> we have listed several politicians. <laughs> Killing it, bro. Um, but yeah, so the, the crazy thing on this uh, band, let's pull this up. Is it's a it's a model specific ban, which is the dumbest way of doing this. Yeah, um, and will also ban copycat guns. It, it's kind of like it, this. This largely follows what California had at one point. Um, so it it also bans copycat weapons, which are defined as a semi automatic center fire firearm that has the capacity to accept the detachable magazine and one or more of the following. So any one of these gets you in. Uh, pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, uh, unless it's a pistol. Thumb hole stock, folding or telescoping stock, forward pistol vertical, angled or other grip designed for use by the non-firing hand to improve control during a high rate of fire. Flash suppressor, flash guard, flash eliminator, flash hider, sound suppressor, silencer, or any item designed to reduce the visual or audio signature of the firearm. Muzzle brake, recoil compensator, or any item designed to be affixed to the barrel to reduce recoil or muzzle ride. Threaded barrel designed to attach <laughs> or grenade launcher. Well, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> now clear. that's where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You're going to tell me I can't launch a flare. Right. This like a chalk round. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. This but, is. So this is like really aggressive. So they've, they've taken, you know, they've kind of picked and choose, chosen from um, New York, from California, from Maryland, and then they've updated it with you know by learning what an angled foregrip is so Ooh. it's pretty aggressive it's pretty aggressive uh the question is when it has a forward pistol vertical angled or other grip designed for use for the non-firing hand does that mean the only rifles you can have are like the revolver carbines where you're not allowed to touch it in front of the cylinder hmm. because what's a handguard right yeah. Designed for use by the non-firing hand to improve control. 
I, yeah. <laughs> Do you ever feel like there's somebody that's very, very clued into the gun industry that's helping write this awful legislation? Yeah, there is, and I know who he is. Interesting. There's one that there's one that I know that does a lot of it. Hmm. Where he said he's made me promise not to dox him in exchange for leaks. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. So okay. Uh, the other um, thing about this law, though, wait, what was that? Was that <laughs> handgun or was that a? Oh, it's thumbs up. Thumbs yeah. up. <laughs> the uh, the bill. So you know that that whole section targets center fire rifles. But it has a separate ban, and this is interesting, on any semi-automatic center fire or rim fire rifle that has an overall length of less than 30 inches. Hmm. So that's really aggressive. This is basically designed to get rid of all the little tactical 22s. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This stuff is so very specific. It's like right. somebody cruises Instagram and they're like, nope, get that on the list. <laughs> get that yeah. there on the list. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Make sure that's did. Huh. <laughs> like, I mean, what is that? That's going to, it's going to target all the little, you know, the fun little tactical 22s, the M and P 15s, right? Um, wait, wait, hold on. Let's see the M and P M and P 22. I think that's probably bigger than 30 inches. Well, collapse though. Yeah, probably. I have one. It's in the same. Thirty-three inches. Yeah, thirty-three inches. So let's see here. So I guess this targets like the pistols, or or any bullpup twenty-twos. Yeah, that's just so weird. Uh, I'm trying to look. It's really bizarre. Yeah, because what do you? I mean, it would it would obviously be targeting like the GSG fives. Um, you know, the little HK four sixteen twenty-two pistols. Um, the little Uzis, you know, all just the little guys that people like to play with. Yeah. Everything fun. They're like, mm, no, thank you. They're like, oh, wait, hold on. Does that look like you could have a nice time? Yeah. And I get, <laughs> this makes me think even more that the, it's like someone cruising Instagram because people are putting their 37 millimeter, uh, f- chalk yeah. round launchers on, on stuff constantly lately. I've been seeing a ton of it over the last couple months and boom, here we go. Washington. Hmm. Yeah. What's the deal? What's the, and like, who cares? The 37 mil is useless. It is. At least right now. Oh, but, it, so like, it totally is. Who got hurt? Nobody. N- yeah, no, that's, I okay, I get what you're saying. They're literally just looking at what's popular. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, this <laughs> is. Like, hold on, they got this now. Yep. What are they doing with it? They're like putting little things in parachutes and, and, and honestly, seeing how far it go. Yeah. It's the, or other grip designed for use by the non firing hand to improve control during a high rate of fire that is written by a gun person. Yeah. Well, except for the, during high rate of fire, I mean, but the, the vertical angled and other thing that was written by a gun person, but the high rate of fire is like, that adds a lot of ambiguity, right? Because, Fair. you know, if we say this is the sniper grip, yeah, or but it's a vertical foregrip, but it's for snipers. By the non-firing hand is the one yeah. that gets me. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, <sighs> no, they paid. I bet you it's the guy I know, because he's plugged in. I'm gonna stab him. No, nice. in Minecraft. Yeah, no, uh, no, wait, hold on, no, the feds are onto that one. Oh, it's no. Roblox now. Uh, Ro- okay, yeah, yeah, in Roblox. No, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna stab him in Roblox. I'm and, gonna and write an always. app. <laughs> we're gonna steal all his robux <laughs> there we go sold oh. all right so <laughs> this is oh boy here we next go. one now <laughs> i've been looking forward to talking about this let's just go to these people's website this is, you have to this is awesome we got the website pulled over here Boom! What's it's up? the we one tactical <laughs> <laughs> We won. They've got the junior 15. Yeah. And this is an 80% AR 15, but not in the way you're thinking. Right. It's 80% size. Yeah. Is that, what is that? One, one tenth, or I'm sorry, eight tenths scale? Four fifths. Four fifths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's an 80% AR-15, Looking. which I absolutely love. It's a little, it, it comes shipped 
with a um, one round magazine, which is fun, but it also have has five and ten round magazines available. And Sean, you got to play with one of these at SHOT Show, right? I did. I did. But I'm actually so stuck on you flexing on me because you can reduce fractions on the fly. Like that that was uncalled for. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to play with one of these. I walked by with a couple of buddies and their marketing uh, struck us and grabbed our attention. And so we walked over and grabbed it. And it's like this little tiny uh, 22LR AR-15 basically. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's tiny. It's like two, just a little over two pounds. Literally my coffee weighed more than this gun did. And half pounds. Yeah. yeah, They're like, they're tiny and they were cute. And I was like, this actually is a great little beginning platform for a kid. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And the guys I was with, they both have young kids and they were like, this is going to be perfect. We're totally going to get some and uh, have them, have them for the kids. My only criticism was, you know, the barrels aren't threaded. Because, mm-hmm. you know, if it's for kids and stuff, you want to put a can on the 22 probably because it makes it a little bit more palatable, I guess. Right. Um, yeah. What do you think? So I understand why they didn't thread the barrel, but I don't understand why they wouldn't have an option. Right. Right. For the, you know, non for a, a threaded barrel. Um, I also understand why they ship it with a one round magazine, um, you know, for one if it's your, you know, the first gun you're introducing your kid to, you might not want it to be mm-hmm. right fully, fully semi-automatic. Um, or no, two point three pounds. It's under two and a half pounds. Yeah, yeah, two point three. Yeah. The um, the marketing here is interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it because it is literally it's a, and it says right here. Our vision is to develop a line of shooting platforms that will safely help adults introduce children to the shooting sports. So you you are making a gun for kids, but you're marketing it to the parents. Kind but of. But they, they, well, I mean, they, 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 that's what they should be doing, right? Yes. But yes. these, this, I don't know how that looks. It's you a, know, these... It's a little obsequious. Yeah, there's there's little little skulls and crossbones that have pacifiers, and like the ones on the right have pigtails, and the ones on the left have little mohawks, and they have crosshairs in their other eye. Yeah, which it's just not great. Now, uh, I want to be a hundred percent clear here. I don't have a problem with their marketing. However. Yeah. It is going to screw us. How many times have we heard anti-gun people talk about, you know, they're marketing to children or they're marketing to this and that and there and have that be like a rallying cry that people get behind because that's, that's ridiculous. Why are we marketing guns to children? Well, there's a thousand reason to market mm-hmm. guns that would be great for children. And again, kids, ki- little kids can't buy guns. So, right. No, but, only your parents could, you know, only the parents would be able to buy one. Yeah. And I mean, that's why there's, you know, there's no chance that people would, would think and suggest that these guns are marketed to be sold to children. Uh, oh no. Uh, oh crap. It already happened. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Oh, you didn't know this? No. Oh yeah. No, so like I just pulled up the tweets. There is a right and proper like crap storm going on. Uh, David Chipman immediately, you know, returning from uh, Twitter obscura. He comes out, uh, complaining that ATF is partnering with NSSF and they said they wouldn't let me do it because NSSF said, wouldn't, said I wasn't good but now they're doing look what they're doing here and he retweeted like so this is just Chipman like complaining that he didn't get the job because he's an idiot murderer uh, but he, he retweeted uh, Ryan DeBoos Ryan uh, Boosie Boosie <laughs> Uh, so what is NSSF up to since it blessed the Sandy Hook man card campaign? Oh, just celebrating this new company that markets AR-15s directly to we kids with skulls and pacifiers. Yup, it's real. We Tacticals Junior 15 debuted at NSSF's SHOT Show about a month ago. I dead ass did not know that this was already going on. Uh, I talked about oh. it with my buddies at SHOT Show. I was like, this is going to be used against us, guaranteed. Well, I mean, how could it not? Like, look, the the governor person of the California 
This, we've got a tweet here from Gavin Newsom. This is vile. A skull and crossbones with a pacifier on weapon of war made to look cute to appeal to kids. The manufacturer calls this a junior 15. Every NRA backed politician should condemn this. Oh my God. That, that is so dumb. Oh, Matt's going to tweet him right now. Oh yeah. Shut the F up loser. Yeah. I like it. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no. Offensive language. To... You can still tweet it. Oh, you're going to get shut down, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I caught a ban earlier this week. Uh, so going back real quick to Chipman's thing, he mentioned the parents of dead children climbing cranes at the White House. What What does that mean? What are they? Our cl- Parents of dead children like Manuel Oliver are climbing cranes outside the White House. Um, apparently oh. he. Oh, they're climbing cranes sure. outside the White House. Oh, okay. He literally did that to get attention. Oh, look, he's on the crane. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Happy Valentine's Day. I did not get that reference. I, I don't get it either because this is just, look, the guy is like barely over a thousand likes on this thing. My kid's yeah. dead. I'm on a crane, y'all. Today, Guac is with me making his own statement so the whole nation can judge our reality. You know, 150 feet high in front of the White House. Peaceful action. Police is on the ground. And you know what? This guy had a very, I, I don't know how his child died. And I'm super sorry that his child died. And yeah. I can only imagine the absolute anguish that he has to deal with every single day waking up and dealing with this, this new life that he has to live without, you know, without his kid. Like I, I literally cannot even imagine. And if he wants to go climb a crane, uh, in, in the memory of his child that totally like do that, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, I don't want to make light of his loss. I don't know what his loss was, but at the same time, father and best friend of Joaquin Oliver, uh, you can Google his name, demanding a change now. Power to the youth. He's from Coral Springs. Yeah. Um, so, it, I yeah, get it. Like, look, you know, do your activism how you want to do it. Yeah. But, you know, you're like, you should at least have some degree of, of sensitivity for the fact that you are um, demanding that peaceful people be put in uh, government. Yeah, it's, it's just so weird to me that some kids saw the Junior 15 uh, in the press from SHOT Show and went and bought one and then killed his child. That's that's super <laughs> poignant, I guess. No, that didn't happen. It, it also, didn't happen. yeah, no, that didn't happen. It yeah. also is interesting the way, um, you know, U.S. Special Forces, Croatian military, and, um, and I think the French Foreign Legion have all adopted the Junior 15, officially cementing it as a weapon of war. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You see this thing and you're like, that is a great gun for kids to learn how to shoot on. Uh, that is not by any means. We will take 100,000 for our land army. Yeah. Yeah. So now 22 LR is a weapon of war. Uh, like I told you, it is the best cartridge. And look, a one round mag. Listen, if you can't get out of trouble with one round. I don't even what, know what like, you're doing. You obviously you need more training. Yeah. You need to do good. Yeah. You need to do good. And it's got a patented safety. So. Yeah. Can't go wrong with this thing, man. Outfit your land forces today. Speaking of outfitting land forces, we have a new sponsor. Oh, dang. It's VZ Grips. Yeah. I'm, at, I would, have, I'm, I'm stoked. I am super stoked, too. We've been in talks with them. Um, they just signed up. They... Their whole thing is the, this G10 material, which is really interesting. They're able to do all kinds of very fascinating color combinations with it. Um, they machine these things from solid G10. They have an AR-15 grip now that is, again, machined from solid G10 and in all kinds of different textures that are just unbelievably grippy. Yeah, I really do these like have, the, I think a, the sharp What's the texture. grip angle? Uh, it's 15, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Very vertical, you know, very modern. Um, 17 degrees. Diff- 17 degrees. Yeah. And uh, all kinds of different textures and colors. When we were recording them, 
they asked us, you know, <laughs> they're going to send us a couple of different products and they are sending us something very special that I cannot wait for. Uh, but also there's something when I was looking through at what I wanted, I was like, wait, what is this VZ pencils? Yeah. Why is that pencil? I was like, why does that pencil cost that much? And then I read, because these might look like a real pencil, but don't expect to write an essay with one. Unless it's in the blood of your enemies. Yeah, it's a stab pencil. It is, like a self-defense type style. Yeah. You, I know you guys have all seen the tactical pens and things like that, and this is one of those G10 style things that's... So I think that there's a definite utility to carrying something like this in a book bag or, or whatever. Uh, because, you know, run, hide, fight, that, that fight part... Right is use anything, plants, chairs, whatever. Well, what about an actual uh, useful striking weapon or implement? Right. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're sharpened. They're incredibly, incredibly strong. And if, you know, I can imagine all kinds of situations where it would be useful to have something that was inconspicuous like this. Mm-hmm. Um, right? Like, you know, imagine you're being held up or something. Somebody holding you up or trying to mug you is not going to take very kindly to a knife in your hand. Yeah. But a pencil might be a different thing. I, I, I don't know. There's, there's, that was just like one thing that came to mind, but I definitely, I love this idea and uh, I am definitely getting one of those. Yeah. No, I think we'll stab some, uh, some like watermelons with it and see how it does. We'll stab some pigs. Y- yeah. Uh, yeah. Federal hogs. I mean, feral hogs. That's what, that's exactly what I meant, actually. <laughs> so that's what, wait, that's what I meant in Roblox. No, I, 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 I actually, I, I did. I think that, you know, just like stabbing some meat and stuff for a video would be pretty entertaining. And yeah. I've seen a lot of these that actually look extremely tactical. This one is very unassuming and I think they're cool. Okay. It comes with a holster. Yeah. Or you can get the holster with it. Yeah. Which is basically so just stab through your- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you don't stab yourself. This, this is pretty yeah. cool. The grips I've actually, I, I've had some sets of VZ grips for years and they're wonderful. The, lots of yeah. different patterns, lots of different textures and stipples and, and lots of different levels of grippiness. It was also interesting because I was sitting talking to Othias and David, our, our friends, and I had mentioned that we got this new sponsor and they both pulled out their CZ 75s and they realized that they already had VZ grips. They didn't See? know it. Yeah. But they were like, Oh, <laughs> I love these. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. But yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, I'm super excited for my grips. Heck yeah, man. That, that's we really will, cool. We will show you guys when we get them in. I know Sean got like, I think you got the, the AR grip. Um, I think I don't remember exactly what I asked for, but, now I know I didn't ask for one of the pencils and I need to like get one of those in. <laughs> and I just realized they have shadow two grips, which will fit my TS two. So I'll probably grab some of those too. Yeah. I only have a couple guns that actually take grip panels that, that are like modern guns that I wouldn't be very upset about changing the grips on. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you're looking for some grips, vzgrips.com coupon code this week, 15. That will give you 15 whole points off. Oh, man. The gri- That's a good deal. That's a lot of percents. Get it. That's 15 per 100. <laughs> Showing off your math skills again. This is just <laughs> starting to make me angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at math. Anyway, uh, next up, we have the DOJ suing Missouri over their Second Amendment Protection Act. Uh, they're seeking to overturn Missouri's SAPA for they're, – they're making several arguments, right? So for one, they're, they're alleging that the act um, – yeah, what, 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 First of all, what, yeah, what did their act do? What did the Missouri's okay. act do? Right. So Missouri SAPA is a, is kind of like a, it's a, it's a fairly decently written sanctuary law. I actually covered it on Fudbusters. If you guys want to check it out, you can look it up on YouTube. Um, and, and when I covered it, I said it was almost great. And I saw problems with the way they drafted it because it declared uh, federal laws null and void in the state. Uh Hmm. Which, but the enforcement mechanism for that was to prohibit any state police officer from 
you know, state or local, like anyone state or below, from working with the feds to enforce any of these acts. And with a fine, if they do go ahead and do that, that is the, the right way to write a sanctuary law. The government, they, they filed a complaint last Wednesday. They're complaining that this prevents critical intelligence sharing between state and federal law enforcement, which, yes, it does. And you can't force them to do that. Uh, you cannot dragoon state resources to work with you. The state they absolutely has the right to refuse to enforce federal law. What the state does not have the right to do is nullify federal law. So, the, so nullifying federal law is when you say the feds can't enforce this law in your state. I don't think that Missouri's law actually nullifies I think that it says it has no effect with respect to Missouri actors. Mm -hmm. And it has a complete right to do that, 100%. I feel like they may have been too aggressive when they wrote the law, though, and that may induce the court to, you know, cautiously side with the government, in which case Missouri will have to amend their law um, to write it more conservatively. But they can absolutely get the same results without declaring the law, um, you know, invalid, um, invalid. Huh? Okay. That's, and, and so now the DOJ has done exactly what you just said. They're like, mm, no, no. Right. So here's the complaint. Uh, let's see there. Yeah. And they're, and here they're completely screwing up. Uh, oh, DC versus Heller. <laughs> yeah, no, they're completely misattributing cases. They haven't even gotten to an actual cause of action. Um, it's 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 ridiculous. Like like they're just complaining about the law. Uh, right. Missouri law is having a harmful impact on public safety efforts within the state. Prior to the enactment, state and local enforcement office in Missouri worked shoulder to shoulder with federal officers to keep Missourians safe. They did so by sharing evidence, data, and other information critical to law enforcement and by participating in joint federal te law task force. Now, it severely impacts federal crime law enforcement operation with state of Missouri. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're saying like Missouri is saying, hey, uh, you can't play with our toys anymore. OK, yeah, because and the it, feds are going. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> we <laughs> <No>! <laughs> <laughs> which <clears throat> that I mean, it's having the desired effect because if right. the, if federal law enforcement is already upset about the thing that's going on in Missouri and saying that it's severely impairing them and Missouri cops and law enforcement agents that even probably want, I mean, there's definitely right. some that want to work with the federal government on this, but they're like, not for 50 grand an instance. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And so it, it shows that the law worked. I just think they need to be more careful. Like, I think that states should be passing more of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the main thing I think this shows is that it did work and it was a good idea. Do you think that there's some possible strategy to making it so all encompassing and strongly written the first time to make the DOJ come to sue them that they then will change it in some way to make it more palatable to the federal government or, or is it, do you just think it was a mistake? I think that, I think that the drafting was a mistake. There's a little bit of, of saber rattling, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's a fatal mistake. I think they can win. Mm -hmm. um, but it all depends on how much backbone the feds have, uh, you know, not the feds, the, um, the, uh, the judge will have. Yeah. Uh, I think one thing they could do to destroy this lawsuit would be to have a special session and amend the law to moot it. Moot it. Yeah. Uh, we've had that used against us many times as freedom lovers in the United States. Yep. So, yeah, they should just, like, change three words in it <laughs> and, just, and like, be like, oops. <laughs> oh, man. That's intense. Done. Is this a federal lawsuit or is this a lawsuit in the state of Missouri? So they're they're suing, well, both. Right? It's a It's a federal suit in Missouri District Court. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. That would be where, where that would be brought. You know, that's the first time that I've ever been like, you know, Missouri might be an okay place to live. I mean, I still don't want to go, but it was, they, they had a decent sanctuary. Yeah. Law. I've, I've been to Missouri. Uh, it was cool, 
but it was also the most miserable weather I've ever had the misfortune to try to live through. I heard that like a lot of stuff happens in caves in Missouri. I believe I met people whose like public school was in a cave. I mean, because being outside is evil. (laughs) (laughs) And apparently they've just got caves everywhere. that They just use for whatever stoked. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah, If you're a Missourian, tell us about your cave story. Yeah. Leave a review on uh, iTunes or yeah. Google podcasts or whatever your cave story. Yeah. We want to hear about your cave. And that is sexual. If you're asking, it's definitely, definitely that. That's yeah. hundred percent that. Okay. 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 So, speaking of sexual. Yeah. Speaking of <laughs> the set. So have you ever um, gone on YouTube? Uh, let's see. YouTube. No, I don't think I'm familiar. Like I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever yeah. been there. It's on the net. Seems dangerous. A, you can go on and, and look at the video. All right. And there's videos on there that are useful. Okay, so there's some videos about like how to do your rivets good on an AK, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. Mm, doesn't seem useful. Well, you know, but there's some senators mm-hmm. that have stepped up and asked YouTube CEO to enforce the ban on ghost gun and structural videos on the platform. Oh, thank God. So basically what happened here is these these senators had their interns look through YouTube to find like videos that still existed like Blumenthal, who is an actual dead body. That man has no life in his bones. Uh, Mere minutes is all it takes to find dozens of YouTube videos on how to make and manufacture ghost guns in clear violation of community guidelines. My colleagues and I are demanding YouTube take action and ensure the content it hosts doesn't exacerbate the threat of these weapons. And uh, so he, he, he posts the letter to where he links to, uh, like, he, this is U.S. lawmakers demanding that YouTube enforce its community guidelines. Yeah. Like, and so they sent this list of questions, like, demanding that YouTube acknowledge that it prohibits uh, content that provides instructions to viewer on how to construct a ghost gun or 3D print a firearm. Uh and the fact that they like they're basically like saying fall on the sword and take them off. Yeah, and and you know, they're doing like they're saying all of the different videos that they found. Uh, I mean, it's oof. yeah. I, I, this this is absolutely. So here's the thing: is like every action has a following or resulting action. <laughs> but um, I see your tweet there. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so every every action has a has a resulting or follow on action, right? So mandating vaccines for businesses, the federal government mandating vaccines for businesses, honk, honk. right, <laughs> leads to things like this: mandating businesses to do what the federal government wants. Uh, did did the federal government not ask Spotify to do more to censor Joe Rogan? Right, like how as an individual in the United States, how? forget the vaccine stuff this right here youtube you have content that we think is dangerous please take that off who is we think it violates your rules on your private platform yeah and clearly (laughs) youtube has very strict policies for gun related content on youtube and they screw us over constantly constantly but it's not enough it's never enough right yeah uh since when since when is this the government of the united states my God, it's a, this is amazing. Like, and also, oh my God, what are you doing with your time? You're emailing YouTube CEO, you brick, like hashtag enough. <laughs> but yeah, we saw the federal government request Spotify. I already mentioned that, but it's, mm-hmm. it's worth revisiting. And, and now this, and then, you know, the goal is very easy to see and Everyone needs to be concerned about this, not just gun people, because what what is it next? It's, you know, cigarettes or alcohol or marijuana or, you know, there's got to be something every American cares about that the government mm-hmm. doesn't want them to have or do or exercise, whatever it happens to be. So, like, this has to be concerning to people. The problem is, well, it's it's and then there were none, man. Yeah, we live in a yeah. clown world. 
and mm-hmm. until it affects them directly. It, it, you know, first they came after the whatever, and I stood by, and then they came after the whatever, yeah. and I stood by, and when they came after me, there was no one to stand with yeah. me. <laughs> I don't know what that quote is, but yeah, I'm it, paraphrasing. Well, and yeah, and when they came for the bump stocks, I said nothing, for mm-hmm. I did not have a bump stock. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's, I think it's generally hunters, you know, and then when they came after the hunting, I had no one left yeah. to stand with me. Right. Wow. This is clown world. Oh, did you say honk. honk a minute ago? What? Did you say honk? Yeah. Yeah. They're taking down the word honk now as, as I, I know, we said, <laughs> but, but you, you said demanding the, you know, the, the vaccine honk honk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I live in Ottawa. I can't sleep. <laughs> yep. Can you believe that Canada's beating us at our own game, man? Did you see like, that the can Canadian um, minister of finance? Uh, I don't know. Some high up government official uh, told Americans that they should watch out donating to these, t- uh, these alleged terrorists because they could see their accounts frozen as well. I mean, we see what happened in Canada. People ran the banks and and banks closed down because of it. And now they're threatening Americans. And I'm like, bitch, please. Mm. Maybe you can get some of your Democratic cronies that, that hate freedom to agree with you on some of this stuff and actually try to push right. that forward. But do you honestly think that would happen in the United States? And what do you think the effect would be if that happened in the United States? Yeah, Girl. if they just suddenly robbed a Girl. substantial subset of the population. <laughs> Like, you I think ba- they'd be a little upset. You're about to make me say bad words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sean said, I'm not supposed to speak French on here. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. It's, <sighs> but I mean, I do like, how is Canada beating us at our own game? How are they doing it? I don't know, man. Like, or what are we doing? I don't know. Chilling. So, what? Chilling. Chillin'. Yeah, that's Get, true. Getting mad on YouTube. Because we got such a big country. It's so easy to chill. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's, everyone's so far away from each other. They yeah. don't have to look at nobody. You know, that's that. <laughs> that is the thing. You go. I, I've probably said this before, but you go online, and my God, it's an absolute crazy disaster, and everything's mm-hmm. falling apart, and just you know, the world yeah. is literally ending as we speak. The children are being murdered, and the grocery store shelves are empty, yeah, and there's empty. so much hatred in the universe and everyone hates each other and everyone's a freaking racist yeah, there's hate groups marching in the yeah. street and then you go out into the street and you look left and right and it's like, no, it's just a hardware store. And then I sit here living my life where I, <laughs> I don't really consume any news and I try to stay, uh, out of the comments as much as possible out of the mainstream comments, uh, as much yeah. as possible. And in my life is actually the exact same as it was one year ago, two years ago. There was a brief lull in there when traffic was a lot uh, diminished and that was pretty mm-hmm. great. But other than that, like everything's the same in my life. I don't see racism every single day. And maybe that's cause I'm white and that some of that white privilege, but you know, life is pretty, life is pretty great. And that's the problem is that everyone's life is probably decent uh, right. at, at, at best. And, and you know, Unless you manufacture a hell for you to inhabit. Exactly. Like you, you, you know, there, oh, there are some people that have it, that have it pretty bad, but overall, you know, the standard of poverty in the United States is like the, you know, top 10% of world income. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, you know, don't quote me on that exactly, but it's somewhere up there like that. We, we have wonderful lives and, you know, I, I remember I got like, I got really singled out in law school for being pro gun. And one, this, there was this one chick who like really was trying to like show it to me, like was really trying to explain to me like what an idiot I was. And I said, and I, I told her, I said, do you realize that you are, you know, these are the, the crime statistics. These are the, you know, murder rates. You are simultaneously safer and more terrified than anyone in American history. Yeah. And, uh, and she just like, she just looked at me and I go, what's wrong with your brain? And then it was, Oh, you're being, you know, then they, they had something else to hook on to because I, you know, inferred that there was a brain thing, but they <laughs> like, they, they, they create a hell and then they inhabit it. And it's just terrible. They yeah. need to stop. Yeah, and I mean, there are people who do create their own hells, and I, I understand mm-hmm. that 100%. You know, when I was a teenager, 
I had long hair and I played in, in heavy metal bands and, you know, I was all about chicks and rock and roll and all that stuff. And I had in my freshman year of high school, I had a ton of problems with uh, getting picked on. Mm-hmm. I had long hair down halfway down my back, um, wore leather jackets every single day. No. And, you know, back then when you got picked on, you fought people. And I actually ended up transferring schools because I got in a fight every single day for three months. Uh, it was the same group of dudes that, that like messed with me. And I, right. I, I punched more people in the face in that three months than most people will in their entire boxing career. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my mom was super upset about it. And we were over at my grandparents' house. And my grandpa said something that at the time made me really angry. But as an adult, as I grew and matured, I really understood it. And he's like, well, when you do your best to stand out, you can't be surprised when people notice you. Mm. and I was like, well, screw you old man. Right. <laughs> but at the same time I was like, God, that was really, it, it was, it was very it was true. Sage. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with it. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to stand out and being different. No, he wasn't it saying is. it's wrong. He's no. saying, yeah, don't ask for it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, we are very tribal in nature yeah. and tribes of things. When something is different, they, they push against that different thing, like expect it, learn how to deal with it which right. I did by punching people in the face <laughs> and eventually I changed schools and everything was fine. But you know, the moral of that story is if you've got pink hair and you're body positive weighing 7,000 pounds or, you know, well that was drastic, but weighing 350 pounds being five, five and you want to find murder in every look that you get, like you're going to yeah. find it. And you, and the hell that you create is, is one that you live in. And I'm not saying don't live there. Just understand that you're getting the attention that you're looking for. It's just right. not positive. So, like you try imagined. not to drag people into your personal hell, but they love doing that because misery loves company and I'm dropping things. Yeah. Um, so thanks for coming to my Ted talk. Yeah, no, that's was, that was good. I appreciate that. Also, you know where there is no personal hell at all. Hmm. Patriot patch company. They don't have any hell patches. Let's check. Okay. Mm, Halloween. Oh, Oh, okay. Uh-oh. They actually do. <laughs> yeah, they got some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa. Cool. I've never seen. That's cool. I have that one on my visor in my Jeep. If you. Franken gun. Go back a page. I've actually. Go back a page. It's not that good. Halloween. Uh, yeah. The revolver with aim for the head. I've never yeah. seen that patch. That's awesome. Oh, neat. That's really cool. It's zombies. It must be big. It's 10 bucks. What? Yeah, three by three and a half. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah they're awesome. Patches are cool. You can put them on the headliner of your car. You can put them on. Uh, they actually sell magnetic patch panels, so you can put patches on your fridge, uh, which is pretty dope. If you is, ask that me. On the, is that on the accessories? Uh, probably accessories right there. Uh, wall patch panel, yeah. The, uh, hold on. Ooh, they got patch panels for your with malice clips. Yep. It's cool. Oh, yeah. And their wall patch panel, extra large. That's one for the wall. But they have a magnetic one that they sell, too. That's really cool. Uh, Yeah. No, I have the magnetic one. I don't know. It's really cool. It is cool. Uh, There it is. Magnetic patch panels, uh, middle row, far right. Oh, you telling me to click on some far right stuff? Yeah. (laughs) Whoa. Oh, that's a cool one. Yeah, it's well set up. Yeah. So, like, on your gun safe? Um, you can put patches on your gun safe. You could do all kinds of stuff. They're fun. Patriot Patch Co. Uh, has been a longtime supporter. In fact, the owner of Patriot Patch Co. started the Firearms Radio Network. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. PatriotPatch.co, and I don't remember the coupon code. Twig10. T-W-I-G-10. That'll give you 10 points. Do it. Or percentages, however you want to do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming.